Hello everyone, I am Subhash. Today I am going to talk about FIR filter design using rectangular window technique. Before going into the designing part, let's discuss the basics of digital filters. So what exactly is a digital filter? In signal processing, a digital filter is a system that performs mathematical operations on a sample discrete time signal to reduce or enhance certain aspects of that particular signal. A digital filter, unlike analog filter, consists of only three elements. They are adder, multiplier and a delay element. Example for a digital system The given figure shows the example for a digital system. In the given example, there are two delay elements and three coefficient elements. The coefficient elements from the digital system given are B0, B1 and B2 and wherever Z inverse is there, it is the delay element. So the output of the digital system which is Y of N can be given as B0 into X of N plus B1 into X of N minus 1 plus B2 into X of N minus 2. So how did we get X of N minus 1 from X of N? X of N is passed through Z power minus 1 which is a delay element to gain output as X of N minus 1. Here we can include a note point that all digital systems are digital filters. Now let's discuss about the types of digital filters. There are two fundamental types of digital filters finite impulse response filter and infinite impulse response filter. In this video, let's focus on finite impulse response filters. In signal processing, a finite impulse response filter is a filter whose impulse response is of finite duration because it settles to zero in finite time. The impulse response of an nth order discrete time FIR filter lasts exactly n plus 1 samples and then it settles to zero. Here n plus 1 is the length of the nth order discrete time FIR filter. Now let's talk about the advantages of FIR filters. They are relatively easy to design and computationally more efficient. FIR filters are implemented in either hardware or software. The phase response of an FIR filter is linear. This property implies that the phase is a linear function with respect to the frequency. The output of FIR filter is delayed by the same amount of time for all frequencies, thereby eliminating the phase distortion which is also called as group delay. FIR filters are always stable, that is, for a finite input, the output is always finite. In linear phase, for the filter of length n, the number of operations are of the order n by 2. Now let's see the disadvantages of FIR filters. They require more memory and calculation to achieve a given filter response characteristics. Also, certain responses are not practical to implement with FIR filters. For a desired frequency response with tight constraints on the passband, transition band and the stop band, an FIR filter may have large number of coefficients, thereby they have more arithmetic operations and hardware components. Now let's talk about FIR filter designing. It can be done in different methods. They are window design method, frequency sampling method, least MSC method and parks mclean method. In this video, let's focus on designing of FIR filters using windowing technique. Based on outputs generated by different windowing techniques, they are classified into different types. They are rectangular window, partlet window, hamming window, hanning window and blackman window. In this video, let's focus on rectangular windowing technique. Suppose if we want to design a low pass filter with cutoff frequency omega c, then the frequency response of the filter will be hd of omega is equal to 1 for all mod omega less than omega c and 0 for everything else. To find the equivalent time domain representation, we calculate the inverse discrete time Fourier transform for that particular signal, which is given as hd of n is equal to 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi 2 pi hd of omega into e power j omega n d omega. By substituting hd of omega in hd of n, we will get the value as hd of n is equal to 1 by 2 pi integral minus omega c to plus omega c e power j omega n d omega. If we solve the calculation, we will get the answer as sin of n omega c by n pi, which is also called as the sync function. The given figure shows the impulse response of ideal low pass filter with cutoff frequency omega c is equal to pi by 4. From the previous image, we saw that HD of n needs infinite number of input samples to perform filtering. To avoid that, we truncate the impulse response and use finite number of samples and assume other coefficients to be zero. Here there are different possible outputs. They include linear phase but not causal, causal but not linear phase, causal and linear phase. Out of all these, we prefer causal and linear phase response because the phase delay of the response should be constant and the filter should be practically implementable which is only possible in causal and linear phase response. 
the given figure shows the causal and linear phase truncated impulse response of the digital filter the truncation of the impulse response is equivalent to multiplying hd of n by a rectangular window w of n which is equal to 1 for n equal to 0 to m minus 1 and 0 otherwise the impulse response of the filter in terms of window function can be given as h of n is equal to hd of n minus m minus 1 by 2 into w of n where m is the number of samples in the window which is also called as the length of the window w of n is the window function and h of n is the impulse response which has infinite samples if we plot the impulse response of the filter which is designed by a rectangular window then it will look like the figure shown below here we can observe the ripples in both pass band and stop band of the filter now let's try to solve a problem which is taken from digital signal processing book by john g proakis design an fr linear phase digital filter approximating the ideal frequency response hd of omega is equal to 1 for mod omega less than or equal to pi by 6 and 0 for pi by 6 less than mod omega less than or equal to pi here we have to determine the coefficients of a 25 tap filter based on the window method by using a rectangular window now let's try to solve this problem using matlab first we need to define the values of omega here omega is equal to 0 to pi with an interval of 0.01 In step 1 we need to plot the frequency response of digital filter for that we are defining h as abs of omega less than or equal to pi by 6 this line basically determines the values of h for all values of omega which are ranging from 0 to pi by 6 the value of h is set as 1 and for all other values of omega the value of h will be set as 0 now if we plot h with respect to omega the graph will look something like this for values of omega which are ranging from 0 to pi by 6 the amplitude is 1 and for all other values of omega the amplitude is zero this is step 1 in step 2 and step 3 we plot the impulse response of digital filter with infinite samples in step 2 we plot the continuous impulse response and in step 3 we plot the discrete impulse response for both of them we need to find the inverse fourier transform of h for doing the same in matlab we have a command called ifft now if we plot the impulse response in continuous domain we will use the plot keyword to do the same in discrete domain we use the stem keyword now the continuous impulse response of digital filter will look something like this here we get the sync function if we do the same in discrete domain then also we'll get the sync function but we will get the sampled version of the previous graph this is the discrete impulse response plot of digital filter with infinite samples in next step we need to define the window function for that we are defining the value of m as 26 but in question we are asked to design a 25 tap digital filter but why are we defining 26 as the value of m as we know in matlab indexing starts from 1 not from 0 so we need to define the value of m as 26 instead of 25 now in next line we are writing win is equal to zeros of 1 comma 315 this line of code will create a row vector of length 315 and puts all zeros in it in the next for loop what we are trying to do is for first 25 values of win we are changing the value from 0 to 1 and leave all others as 0 this will give us the window function If we plot the window function with respect to omega the graph will look something like this for first 25 samples of window function the amplitude is 1 and for all others the amplitude is 0 now in step 5 we need to find the discrete time response of digital filter after windowing to do the same we need to multiply the window function with the inverse fourier transform of h after doing this we will get the discrete time plot of digital filter but here we won't get infinite samples we will get only finite samples after multiplying with the window function we will get the discrete impulse response but we will get a truncated version only for the first 25 samples we will have non zero amplitude for all the other samples we will have zero amplitude this is because of windowing this truncated version is the final discrete impulse response of our digital filter which we are asked to design now as we have successfully designed we need to find the amplitude values of first 25 samples for that we are using for loop but inside the for loop we are writing abs of r of i why we are taking the absolute value why not normal r of i value here we consider the initial impulse response as the single sided band but not double sided band as we consider single sided band we will get the complex values in the output so we are using the absolute function and printing the values if we execute this block of code we will get the output as shown on the screen we will get the amplitude values of first 25 samples of h of n now let's try to plot the magnitude response of the digital filter which we have designed earlier for that we need to find the fourier transform of r 
To find the Fourier transform of any signal, in MATLAB we have a command called FFT. After finding the Fourier transform of R, we need to plot it with respect to omega. When we plot, the output will be similar to the figure showing on the screen. We can clearly observe the passband and stopband ripples and we can also see the amplitude starts attenuating around pi by 6.